Good morning. On this Sunday morning, I want to welcome you to the worship of Gaston Oaks Baptist Church in Dallas. To the Gaston Oaks family, I hope all is well with you. I have missed seeing you for so very long, and I am excited uh, about the fact that we are planning to come back together at Gaston for our worship for the first time on Easter Sunday morning. That will be an amazing experience. I hope that all of you who are a part of the Gaston family can be there. Now, as we prepare for worship on this Sunday, will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we ask that you will be with us today as we worship. We thank you for the Gaston family. We thank you for those who may be joining us, uh, friends and guests from other places across the country. And we ask that whenever they listen or watch this, that this time will be a blessing. It will be a time truly for worship in their lives. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank 
Father, we thank you that today we begin to look towards the cross, that we begin to look towards this time of year when we especially look and remember your sacrifice on the cross leading to your resurrection, the very reason for our salvation. May we never forget that, Lord, in this service, throughout this time, throughout our whole year. May our focus be on being grateful to you for the cross and the empty tomb. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Have you been to the cross where the Lord judgment of the cross falls steady, clear, and sure. Yet humbly in our striving, O God, 
we face its test. We crave the power to do your will with him who did it best. On us let now the healing of his great spirit fall and make us brave and full of joy to answer to his call. Yeah. 
in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Thank, Thank you, Father, for, for your amazing love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Thank you, Father, for your amazing love. Last week, on these Sundays leading up to Easter and concluding on Easter Sunday, I am 
preaching a series entitled The Mystery of Grace. When I talk about the mystery of grace, I'm talking about grace in an all-inclusive kind of way, not just God's grace that forgives us, that calls us to himself, that calls us to his kingdom on this earth. I am also talking about his grace that becomes a part of us. This morning, I want us to consider Jesus. And I want us to consider Jesus as a man not for himself. As you know, I spent my last 15 years as pastor at the First Baptist Church in Lawton, Oklahoma. Lawton, of course, is right on the edge of the largest, uh, in the largest artillery training center for the United States Army in the world. During those years, I learned a great deal about people who serve our country. And I can tell you, I could not have been more impressed by the young people, both who were enlisted and those who were officers. It was an amazing experience for me to see the quality of people that want to serve our country. You know, one of the cardinal doctrines of military service is that in the midst of of mortal combat, each person is to be concerned about the welfare of their comrades in arms. No man or woman is to put his own safety above the safety of his friends, of his buddies. When an order comes, to abandon ship on the high seas. It is an acknowledged rule that if there are women and children aboard, they are the first ones to fill the lifeboats. And then the men, in orderly fashion, with captain and crew being the last to leave the ship. However, in moments of desperation, whether it be on the battlefield or in imminent peril upon the sea on a sinking ship, the final instruction sometimes comes every one for themselves. When Jesus was dying on a cross, the people seeking to hurl a final insult at him mockingly cried out, Let this so-called Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross, if he indeed is the Christ. There are two questions that come to mind about those insults. Could Jesus have come down from the cross? Without any question. Yes, he could have. Matthew 26, verses 52 through 54, bear that out clearly in Jesus' own words. So the next question is, why did Jesus stay on that cross? Why was Jesus not a man like us for himself? When the people mocked Jesus about coming down from the cross, can you imagine how incredibly shocked they would have been if Jesus indeed had come down from the cross? There is only one way that they would have been more shocked. If they had known what you and I know now, 
That is, that Jesus could indeed have come down from the cross and did not. Why did Jesus voluntarily stay on that cross? You see, Jesus had every human reason conceivable to come down from the cross. The people he came to save not only rejected him, they were many of the ones who were crucifying him. His closest friends, for the most part, abandoned him in these final hours. His Father in heaven, in that one horrible moment, seemed to Jesus to have forsaken him. In that moment, Jesus was more alone than any person could have ever been on this earth. Why did he stay on the cross when he did not have to? Why was Jesus not a man for himself? This indeed is a mystery of grace. And I have come to believe the answer to that is what we call cruciform forgiveness. Costly forgiveness. God through Jesus Christ was not only willing, he was determined to die that his forgiveness might be costly. His forgiveness might be so filled with love that we have been overwhelmed by it. We cannot conceive of a man or a woman that is not for themselves. Because down deep where we live, we know that we are people who are too often only for ourselves. We have known that disconcerting truth about ourselves from the moment we began to be aware of persons beyond ourselves. As infants, we knew the meaning of mine even before we knew what the word actually meant. All of us can surely remember as children pushing and shoving so we could be at the front of the line for recess, going to the playground, going to the cafeteria or the bathroom. We did not necessarily have a desperate need to play or eat or go to the bathroom. We just wanted to be at the front of the line. As adults, we are not that far removed from our childish and selfish behavior when our needs arise. When we're in our automobile and we see a sign that says one lane traffic ahead, we tend to think that, well, that means everybody else. But we'll race ahead of the line and then we'll kind of force our way into the line down closer to the sign. As adolescents, we can all remember when our bodies were developing, when our sexual desire was increasing, we can remember those selfish feelings as boys thinking I'll go as far as a girl will let me or as girls thinking my body gives me the key to acceptance and popularity. As husbands or wives, we typically think of our own needs first. He thinks it is beside the point 
that she has worked all day, prepared the meal, cleaned the kitchen, bathed the children, read to them and got them to bed. She ought to be ready at moment's notice to meet my needs. She thinks it really does not make any difference that he has talked and been talked to all day and much of the talk was not pleasant. So when he's not ready to spend the evening talking with me, will he not meet her needs, his needs, her needs, he for himself, she for herself, clash, hurt feelings, impasse, crisis, and too often, divorce. As people who are blessed with financial means, we enjoy what money can buy. And we are quite often people for ourselves. Anybody knows that you can live better on 100% of what you make than 90%. And yet we hear the call of our faith that challenges us to consider giving what the Bible calls a tithe or 10% of our income to the cause of Christ, to the kingdom of God on this earth. It makes no difference what the church is doing. My family and I come first. There's always someone better able to support the kingdom work that needs to be done. Why should I have to share with those in need they probably got themselves into the mess they're in if they're hungry or have other kinds of needs. The hard truth is we are a people for ourselves and we have a terribly difficult time understanding one who is not. The scripture describes our predicament perfectly in Romans 3, verse 23, we have all sinned. We are each for ourselves. We fall short of the glory of God. The desperate human question is this. Is there any way to restore the glory of humankind that we so abruptly lost in what the Bible calls the fall, our rejection of God's will and purpose in our lives. Is there any hope for us to overcome our tendency to always be people for ourselves? And the answer is yes. There is hope. That is precisely the reason that Jesus was not a man for himself. It's precisely the reason that he chose to stay on the cross. There is a sense in which Jesus became ultimately the Christ of God through his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. If Jesus had come down from the cross, he would not have been the Christ. Because in his death on the cross and in his resurrection from that death, Christ overcame the power of sin and selfishness and death. In his death and in his life, we have hope. The early theologian Paul 
wrote to the Colossian church, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Because of the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection from the grave, the power of the Christ of God is available to us. In spite of our selfish tendencies that have been with us since birth, in spite of our knowing since infancy that we are for ourselves, still there is hope for us. There's, there is hope for us as children, as adolescents, as adults. There is hope for our marriages, for our other human relationships, in finding ways to put others first. There is hope for our incessant desire to always want more and to want to hold on to all that we have. There is hope because Jesus was not a man for himself. There is hope because Jesus chose to stay on the cross and on that cross he died. There is hope because Jesus Christ arose from the grave and lives today and wants to live in us. Let me close by talking to you out of my own life. I became a Christian when I was nine years old. I have said it was like walking through a door that had always been open. And so it's very normal, very natural for me as a child. One day, at the First Baptist Church in Ardmore, to profess my faith in Jesus and to be baptized. But it was when I was 16 years old at a summer youth camp called Falls Creek that I first heard these kinds of words. These are the words of Jesus from Mark chapter 9. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Let me close with the words of Philip Yancey, who wrote these words. Jesus did not come to die so that we could have happy and self-indulgent lives to show the rest of the world. No, he came as an example for us to follow. When he said, I tell you the truth, when a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it returns only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. It is in our self-giving service. It is in our dying to self that we make a difference in this world that will live on after us. Like Jesus, 
May we be people more often who are not just people for ourselves. Heavenly Father, thank you to this high calling to which you have called every single one of us to follow you, to give our lives in service for you and for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed worship this morning as we have begun to focus on the cross in this journey that will lead us to the resurrection on Easter Sunday. We're so very grateful to God for all that he does through our salvation and every day. So now as we've been the people of God gathered together, let us be the people of God scattered, salt and light, making a difference in this world for Jesus' sake. As we go, may your spirit go before us.